Right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, Can you all hear me? It's the head off. No, I'm muting you. No. Uh, I need you, Tom. Yep. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, to what is our first uh, remote uh, event that we've set up using the uh, the WebEx media. Uh, it's quite an exciting uh, time for us as a committee because if it works. Obviously, it opens up a whole new world of uh, potential um, uh, talks, things that we can bring you. Um, today, uh, we've got the, the pleasure of introducing uh, actually one of my colleagues, a called Chris uh, Patterson. He's, Chris is the lead visual media specialist working in Jacobs uh, Digital Solutions and Visual Media Group. Um, I had the pleasure a few months ago of Chris coming to the office. Um, basically to give the office a bit of a rundown as to the kind of work that his team does. And while he was here, never wanted the opportunity to go by. I thought what a great, uh, what a great uh, uh, session we could, we could hold potentially on this. Tonight's talk, Chris is going to look at, uh, it's, it's going to look at, uh, to demonstrate the latest advances in 3D virtual reality, augmented reality that we're looking at, how it can be used uh, for clients all over the world, and how it sits with uh, new high-tech scanning, modeling, 3D and BIM techniques as well. Um, like I said, I mean, I had a sneak preview as we were setting up and uh, I hope you guys all enjoy it as much as, uh, as, much as I did. Um, Chris, are, are we okay to have uh, questions during it or are you wanting them all at the end? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I don't mind questions. Um, there's 12 attendees. Um, you know, so I think that's a, a manageable audience for, for any questions you know, yeah. throughout the presentation. Good to try and make it interactive as possible anyway from hearing a, my lovely Scottish mm -hmm. voice. <laughs> so, I'll, yeah, I'll disappear now. I'll let you crack on. Okay, thank you, Chris. Excellent. Thank you very much for the, the introduction. Can I just do a bit of a, a quick sound check just to make sure that everybody can hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, so thanks for the, the introduction. Um, you know, I'm Chris Patterson, and I lead the Jacobs Visual Media Group. Uh, I've been with Jacobs for just coming up for 14 years now. So, uh, very much kind of em embraced within the company, and you know the the, the traditions and the culture uh, of Jacobs as a whole, especially with embracing technology. And I've you know, had the, the the pleasure over the years to to, to build a team. Um, you know about uh, our capabilities and you know what we can offer to our clients on our projects and how we can actually you know um, design smarter as well by using uh, various tools uh, which I'll, I'll get on to in, in the presentation um, so I do have a PowerPoint um, just to kind of kind of go in a bit of a background and who we are um, our capabilities um, some of some videos um, that will be shown and then some applications that I'll show at the end as well um, and just to make it interactive as possible with the, the attendees that we do hire, then please, you know, don't hesitate to, to ask any questions uh, whatsoever, and um, I'll be able to help and assist and answer them the best I can. So I'm just going to turn my webcam video off now, and that's just to kind of save more on the the bandwidth. Um, so I'm just going to take that off and then share my screen. So I'm hoping that everybody can see that now. <clears throat> so just the, the PowerPoint that I'm just going to run through. OK, so just a quick like introduction um, on what kind of topics I'm going to be covering. Um, just a bit of background on the team, the capabilities. You know, we as a group, what are our overall objectives and the type of projects that we've been working on? Um, you know, with our clients, even looking at commercial models that's embraced by our, our global leadership. Um, probably most importantly as well, it's like what value does 3D visualization and technology bring to our designers, to our design teams, um, you know, to work efficiently, and how we're actually embracing technology for safety, you know, how, what we're using with virtual reality to develop um, bespoke and tailor-made solutions that can be be used for um, onboarding um, to going on site, um, and then I just have a, a few more examples at the end as well. So without any further ado, just moving in. <clears throat> so the team, um, I'm based in the Glasgow office, um, and there's seven of us in Glasgow, and there is four of us in the Bristol office. 
um, and that's for uh, EMEA within our region. And uh, my counterpart in the US, um, who's um, had the established team for a little bit longer than myself, you know, since 2005, um, uh, my counterpart has 21 members of staff in the Americas region. Um, and it's about you know what we then do as a global community of practice. You know, we're actually collaborating collaborating across multi regions, like working efficiently. You know, using time zones to our, our advantage as well. You know, especially with everything that's been going on in the last, to be honest, six months since the outbreak of uh, you know COVID nineteen. It's trying to work smarter, you know, more efficiently, <clears throat> and kind of being able to to work near enough around the clock as well. So we've very much kind of got very diverse backgrounds. Um, I'm actually an interior architect by practice and um, within my team here in, in, in the UK and within EMEA, I do have games developers, 3D artists, uh, I've got architects, uh, I've also got um, I brought over from transportation as well as uh, members of the team who have like civil backgrounds. So it's bridging that gap from working with our BIM teams, working, working with our design teams and being able to integrate our solutions and our capabilities as part of the project life cycle. So we felt that that was a, you know, a critical aspect of the workflow as well. So just kind of then getting on to a wee bit on the capabilities on who we are and what we actually do. So we've kind of then been breaking that down into into three themes of interact, move and still. Um, and I will cover each of these themes in a little bit more in depth um, you know, throughout this presentation. Uh, but it's really what can we do by harnessing the power of visualization to really bring in that vision to life, not only just for the client, but it's for our design teams as well. It's working smarter, not harder using the tools to our advantage, you know, to actually uh, cut costs, um, you know, by demonstrating that workflow. Um, not only is it just the cost, it's the time. You know, if we're able to then come back to our client and basically say that we can give you more draft reviews, we can actually take you into an actual experience where you can walk around your design or your space in a relatively short space of time. That then starts to work to our advantage within Jacobs. We're really able to then demonstrate that we can work efficiently. We can then be able to take the design and not only being able to do clash detections a lot quicker, but we can then start to design virtually as well. And that's what the industry is now starting to embrace by using these tool sets, not just within Jacobs, but you know, you know, within um, you know the actual uh, overall industry with our competitors too. <clears throat> it's really kind of been able to, to identify that and that can be from the high-end visualization um, which I'm going to show some examples um, shortly but more even conceptual you know even looking from an optioneering you know stage one of a design you know, we're literally just putting lines on a drawing or a map or anything like that you know we're able to actually bring that to life um, and it's not just for for infrastructure. It's across um, like critical mission solutions. It's within transportation, um, you know, nuclear, um, energy. You know, um, it's really can be encapsulated across um, multi disciplines and multi sector as well. So I have a a demo reel. I am going to put in a, a bit of apologies in advance. As much as this is running perfectly on my screen. There might be a little bit of a lag and um, just streaming it over um, online. <laughs> so this is just uh, one of our demo reels just to give a flavour of um, our overall capabilities, our diverse, our diverse projects that we work on. And I'm just going to talk about these a little bit more in depth as well shortly. But it just gives you a, a wee bit of a flavour of, you know, of what visualization can, can do you know, for your project or for your client or even for you as an individual by using these tools to actually be able to help your design process as well. So you can see we can go for something quite conceptual to really kind of high end photorealism. And it's really about, you know, that communication, you know, uh, you know, being able to explain that clearly. Um, even something like this, it might seem maybe a little bit cartoony, 
but this is what the client wanted. You know, and it's all about listening to to the client. You know, being able to communicate that effectively. And construction phasing as well, which is becoming, you know, really kind of part of the norm now. You know, making that as a business as usual approach to, you know, to design rather than an ad hoc request. So hopefully that gives you just a rough idea of who we are, of what we do. So even kind of touching on some of those kind of points within that demo reel. So we've, we were talk, you kind of saw a couple of examples of the construction um, phasing and even looking at 4D, 5D, uh, which I've got a few applications that I'm going to show after this PowerPoint. But it's really kind of been able to have a look at, you know, what is possible, being able to identify art of the possible and being able to, you know, communicate that back to, you know, to your design teams, to even your colleagues as well. And being able to then demonstrate that by using these applications, by using these tools, it will become you know more efficient as well. You know, I'm trying to embrace a culture right now where you know in the past visualization used to be a nice to have. It was always the end of a project life cycle. Um, you know, having a nice, you know, let's say kind of animation, you know, showing off the design. We're now actually being able to demonstrate that, you know, we can come in at the beginning of a project life cycle, really kind of that optioneering, as I was mentioning previously, um, you know, even something that could be white card, you know, having a model that isn't even textured, just to be able to kind of show spatial awareness um, and being able to, to, to use, you know, the actual available tools to actually produce a 3D environment very, very, very quickly. So this is just some of our our clients and the projects that we've been working on over the, over the years. As I said, it's just a select few, but it kind of really kind of homes in on the, kind of the diversity of, of uh, the projects and the clients that we have um, and that you know, we've been embracing with over the, over the years. Um, so we're just even kind of clicking on a little bit something closer to home here in Scotland. It's one of the, the largest kind of infrastructure projects, part of our, the dueling. Um, so it's a very kind of hazardous road. So there's a lot of fatality on this on this road network, and it's all about taking it from a single carriage to um into a dual carriageway all the way from Perth to Inverness. Uh, yeah, so it's a, a large you know project, and we've basically we're asked to step in and help support public consultations and the stakeholder teams as well. So I'm going to touch a little bit on that um later on on this as well. Kind of then looking at the stills is then having a look at what can we then do with photo montages. So we have members of the team who do um, photo montages to environment guidelines. So the strict, um, like a workflow that we that we embrace to ensure that you know we are demonstrating and accurately representing what that design is going to look like within a photo a photograph or a photo montage, um, and being able to kind of without any kind of distortions and things like that. So you can see from this one here, um, being able to, you know, when it's sheeted up, part of the enviro, environmental impact assessment is that these were then sheeted up and um, formed part of that assessment as well. So this is maybe more towards highways, but, you know, this is applicable to all lines of business as well and sectors. Uh, just kind of moving on. It's just showing another apologies if it's lagging a little bit, but it's kind of then showing kind of interactive media as well. Being able to quickly re you know, take data that can come from project wise or similar kind of document control systems, uh, which we have members of the team who are uh, very, very familiar with. Uh, yeah, I've been working with BIM since 2009. So I wouldn't say that I'm a, a BIM specialist by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm aware I'm, I'm aware of the process, you know, and how we can work that to our advantage, you know, and the fact is that we're not duplicating data, you know, we're actually you know using the raw data as well. So this is just a, an application that we used using games technology, um, just to take a very very large, overall scaled environment into an interactive environment, as you can see here. And it was fully customised and branded you know, for the client too. So even 
this isn't linked to the internet, so it's just <clears throat> so it's maybe not always about the, maybe the designing as well, where we can come in, we can come in where we're actually helping tell a story. That can be part of bids, it can be part of tenders, part of the sales process, or really even trying to help you know, the, the public better understand what an environmental impact would be on a particular design. So with this one here, this was all very much of telling that story from a, a, the beginning, the middle of the end, using stock footage to really kind of been able to um, you really kind of like uh, tell that story. So from here, we've got the stock footage of the video, and then we're starting to get into the 3D visualization where we're using data sets like Revit um, and being able to really kind of work with close with our architects to ensure that the materials are accurate. You know, we're actually representing that. But it was all about the customer, the passenger journey from drop off all the way through the, the, to the departure hall. So everything that you see here is all rendered. Um, but the actual actress that we hear, that you see in the, the forefront, uh, we green screened in this actress into the actual video to bring it to life. So yeah, this, so this is going from the, the very much the, the high end um, of the, the spectrum of what we do. Just going to skip this on a little bit just to kind of show. So uh, yeah, so we're working very closely with our architects, just ensuring that we're getting those key messages of the design as well. You know, not one of our members of staff in, the, in our US um, offices, uh, we green screened in as well. Yeah, so. So just showing off a few examples before I, uh, the other one I was going to show is just how we're, if this wanted to work for me. No, it doesn't. Apologies, just one second. Things didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it just gives you a flavour of some of the projects that we've worked on. <clears throat> Our overall objectives, as I was saying in that previous one with Denver, is you know being able to to tell that story through effective communication. So the kind of the four me the four themes that I look at when when I'm talking to you know clients or design teams is about that engagement, understanding the design and the securing. So it's about like kind of using kind of different immersive experiences. You know, and you know, trying to make that as diverse as possible. So, for example, a prime example of that would be, you know, um, a virtual reality um, headset. You know, not everybody likes VR. You know, motion sickness and everything like that. So, what we do is that, you know, to 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 show that kind of diverse, and so we're not just then isolating other people who may not like it. Is that we're then creating an interactive um, experience that could be used on a tablet or a laptop as well. So as much as you're not gaining that isolated experience, you're still being able to see that that uh, that 3D environment as well. So it's about being able to, to to demonstrate from our point of view is that you know we do you know kind of open it up for for um, for everyone. <clears throat> Understanding the data, we work with so many forms of data and file types. Um, I've lost count <laughs> to be honest. Um, Autodesk products and file types, Bentley. You know, even looking from Aviva, um, from our, um, and even like looking at PDMS, you know, we've got workflows. Uh, you know, if there's a file type that we don't know, you know, we always try and develop a workflow. You know, to just actually embrace that file type. So, you know, we always relish that challenge. And then, then having members of the team as well with that experience really does you know play to our advantage as well as part of that that uh, that process. Enhancing that communication as well, being able to actually find out well what is the actual you know what's the challenge from our projects, from our clients, even from our design teams, you know, and actually then being able to come up with a, a, a tangible solution, and then what's the actual outcome from there. So it's sitting down and talking with them, communicating effectively, and then actually coming up with a bespoke and tailored solution you know, to try and solve that challenge. And then, and actually, then, then connecting with our audiences as well. You know, that could be internally, and it could be externally as well for the public. Um, a lot of our output is public facing, so it could be on YouTube channels, it could be on uh, our clients' websites, <clears throat> or even printed onto billboards. You know, depending on what the actual project is as well. And you know, past experience is that it has actually helped secure 
um, you know, winning projects and and even projects, you know, that are maybe gone to public inquiries, you know, being approved to go to construction as well. So, you know, from visualization from conception all the way through to, you know, to the high end detailed design, um, it always plays a part, you know, in part of the the objectives. A little bit on our on our process is that I would even put a zero in here where we're actually then having. <clears throat> uh, kind of working with our sales and our and, and tenders and bids as well, but this just gives give you an idea of of our line of thinking. You know when we're actually working with our with projects and uh, with data as well, and how, how we're actually then using that technology to actually you know, help encapsulate you know a three D environment as well. So you know previous to that theme, the overall theme is you know bringing that vision to life as well. Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier about stakeholder engagement. Uh, we work extremely close with uh, our stakeholder engagement teams, um, and it's really just trying to help our public and uh, and our clients gain a better understanding of the actual impact of design, uh, you know, within the environment, um, um, or even within a site as well. So. With these themes that you see here, from accessibility, you know, being transparent, you know, with the uh, <clears throat> with the public as well, you know, not misleading them, uh, <clears throat> you know, managing their expectations, uh, and then obviously, you know, looking at immersion and building that relationship. You know, we're very much kind of seeing that, you know, it's building that trust, and then from our point of view, is that leaving that lasting impression. Um, you know, I would say that you know, for. My honest opinion is that we embrace technology and our solutions. Um, you know, so it's not just about talking about what we can do better; it's about actually delivering as well. So, yeah, stakeholder engagement and really, you know, demonstrating that to the public is uh, is critical to to any project. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions? Uh, just. Happy to answer. I, mean, I haven't got any yet, uh, Chris. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody knows, you can actually go on. There's a Q&A. Uh, you can bring up on the text. No problem. If any <clears throat> questions, just type them in and we'll... Uh, Excellent. Cheers. Yeah, so moving into the themes of the Interact moving still. So we've kind of covered um, you know, uh, the capabilities of like virtual reality, you know, how we're using that for safety, you know, how we're using the technology to design more in a virtual environment. Uh, and I would say we're probably embracing that more so now than ever before um, due to the, the the global challenges that we have, um, you know, uh, that's happening with the pandemic, even embracing um, augmented reality as well. And the difference is, is the fact is that with virtual realities, you're putting a headset on and you're entering a virtual experience. So very much kind of looking at uh, a 3D environment, whereas with augmented reality, it's about using a device or a wearable you know, uh, technology and overlaying um, data in the real world. So similar to in the past from your Google Glass or your HoloLens or, or even the AR kit you know, on Apple um, devices, you know, being able to we have the, the experience and the and the knowledge to to develop solutions for uh, VR and AR and more of that kind of user engaging application um, too uh, that can be deployed onto uh, many platforms as well um, for even with Apple and for Android. Um, so it's all about you know being able to open up you know um, a lot of those themes that I've mentioned you know previous in this this PowerPoint. Uh, and being able to to create an application um, that is really kind of embracing uh, you know the, the digital era uh, that we're currently uh, currently in right now. A little bit more in the movement theme, so that's our traditional kind of three D visualization and fly throughs, similar to that Denver Airport one that you saw, uh, or even walkthroughs. You know, taking that uh, data, uh, regardless if it's uh, transportation or you know Revit models for you know interiors or exteriors. It's about you know uh, being able to storyboard that um, and communicate that effectively. Applying motion graphics as well, um, and you know we've done quite a lot of narration in the past as well. Um, so we work in a script, um, and then we have the actual the narration going over the the, the video uh, to complement 
and really kind of home in on the key messaging as well, so that doesn't get lost in with a fly through. Um, the phasing, um, you know, with the 4D and construction phasing, you know, that's becoming like more and more of a request. Uh, we see that as kind of that, that business as usual approach rather than an ad hoc nice to have. Um, and the explainer, you know, how we can maybe do things in 2D um, and just being able to explain a project if there isn't any 3D assets that are available. And then looking at still, so you know, still images, the photo montage, photo montages, as well as any 360 sphericals as well. So with the 360s, we can put that onto VR headsets. We can even put that onto YouTube as well, where you can actually then just kind of go online or onto a headset, and you're in a static 360. Um, so you wouldn't be able to move or anything like that. But you know, you get a lot of these ones where you can see like the Eiffel Tower. Um, you know, on your phone or something like that, and you're able to kind of, if it's gyro, to be able to move it to the left or right, up or down, 360 motion. Um, you know, we have that capability as well. Um, so sometimes, you know, if they don't want a full VR, um, you know, we can do kind of, you know, static 360s as well. And it's really kind of just the main point from ours is just effective communication, sitting down, you know, um, regardless of its designers, projects or clients and really being able to um you know gain a better understanding of you know what their challenge is, you know, what we believe the solution could be and potentially be, and then the actual overall outcome as well. And then just some some client feedback that we worked on <clears throat> over the past few years as well. I think that's always important um, to get these kind of like appraisals and testimonials from clients. Um, it always helps, um, you know, not only win work, uh, you know, it always does, you know, if we're building up that relationship with clients. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just from a, a well-being point of view of the team. Um, you know, when they've done a piece of work that's been really successful, is getting that feedback. So, <clears throat> you know, what we did with Birmingham City Council, um, where we actually worked with a lot of 2D and we actually managed to turn that into 3D, um, you know, for the public. The Welsh Government, uh, which was the an 18 kilometres of um, road design that we took into a VR um, um, headset, um, where it had four modes of transport. It had in-car mode, it had drone mode, frame roam mode, and you're able to kind of teleport to 300 points of interest within the whole area. Um, and the overall area was done by um, scanned photogrammetry over uh, from a light aircraft and then we took that data and processed that into into our uh, our systems and made this huge <laughs> 3d environment um, and it was one of the first vr applications that was used as a public inquiry in the uk for for transportation so uh, from our point of view that was a huge success project um, and they've been even touching on that laser scanning you know we can do a lot with the uh, point cloud data and being able to take that raw data and actually mesh it and even animate it and to create walkthroughs as well. Um, and that can be from like laser scans, um, it could be taking uh, videos or photos from drones um, or even from like aircrafts and doing photogrammetry. So I wouldn't say that we're a jack of all trades, but uh, yeah, we do a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. So. Uh, which is, shows that kind of a lot of the added value of what we can do um, and what visualization can do um, if it's utilized in the um, part of a, you know, part of the, the workflow as well. And then just reaching further afield to our um, Australian colleagues as well and our clients out there too. So, yeah, very much kind of got a global reach. And then one of the, to show this one. Hopefully this will work. <clears throat> so what we've got, we actually won a, a render award for innovation from one of our clients, Highways England, for this for this project. Um, when there wasn't a lot of, um, there's a large 50 kilometre scheme. Um, it's the Smart Motorways Project M4. Um, yeah, so yeah, we we blended more of that kind of cartoon style. Um, that we did with uh, 
motion graphics and then basically created a video where we compiled that with uh, the 3D visualization that you can see here and using the BIM data as part of that as well. So, you know, if you're seeing that an overarching kind of workflow, it's actually you know taking that BIM data from project wise or some document control system and then turning it into a 3D model that you can see from here. Um, an advantage is when we're doing that is that once you've got a 3D environment is that you can have multiple outputs. So you can have animations, still images, even virtual reality as well. So it's really been able to, you know, to give that kind of that added value and the differentiator, you know, by creating one 3D environment, but having multiple outputs as well. Yeah, just a little bit on the on the the why, you know, for visualization. So we actually see it actually increases engagement. Um, the A four six five is a prime example, um, where we had in our Cardiff office, we had multi sector, um, not only with Jacobs but with joint ventures as well, who we were actually able to use the VR application as our design review tool. So it was a a collab a collaborative platform for multi-discipline, multi-sectors, like, you know, structures and, you know, even for the landscaping teams and the highways teams, they're all able to, to go into this VR um, environment and able to do a design review. And just making sure that, you know, whatever they're putting in their 3D models, you know, within their platform and their tools was conveying within um, an, actual, um, an actual environment as well. So we actually now have research papers that we are commissioned to do. Um, that actually shows that you take more information in with 3D visualization and within VR than you would um, within a kind of 2D drawings, um, and it is able to convey that that uh, you, know, um, you know the kind of complex designs um, to life a lot easier as well. Collaboration has increased as well, as I was saying, you know, for federated models throughout the project as well, been able to identify the goals. Um, and really kind of engaging with colleagues and that doesn't have to be office by office you know we have actually created a VR solution where we could be sitting in the other side of the world I could be sitting here in the Glasgow um, no office because we're not in our offices at home <coughs> and we could enter the same environment it's like a wee avatar um, of one another so we're in the same model and you can do a design a live design review um, so obviously decreasing uh, kind of travel um, you know, and the carbon footprint as well. So it's all about that increased collaboration and cost reduction as well. I think that's a, a big <coughs> caveat and perception that visualization always costs a lot is that you can make it as cost effective or as expensive as you want. It's really a down to kind of what you aspire to, what our clients, what our projects are really wanting to engage with. Um, and the way that the industry is growing you know, with the tools that are disposable is that we're already able to demonstrate that by reducing our costs by nearly a third over time, um, just to you know, the efficiencies that we now have in place. And just a case study that I always like to show. <laughs> just a lot of that that uh, that value and the, and the why is that you know another piece of work here up in Scotland, and uh, you know we're avoid going to public inquiry, so we see it as you know, it was a, a forty thousand pound investment you know on um, stills and interactive um, application as well as an animation that was used for our public consultations and we saved the client in excess of four hundred and fifty thousand pounds because it avoided going to public inquiry. So it really kind of shows you know how important you know and how critical that visualization can be. Um, you know not just at the start of a project but it's all the way through to construction as well. And then I always get asked how much do these things cost? So this is just a, an indicative overview on <clears throat> what we see as the kind of a bronze, silver, or gold. So we worked on projects that could be literally a couple of hundred pounds um, up to you know 25k, but it's really then been able to storyboard that and build a scope of works so on a brief, you know, based upon you know the actual requirements. You know that uh, uh, that's you know uh, the client. What the project's looking for, and similar with silver and with gold as well. <clears throat> obviously, the more complex, um, you know, uh, obviously, then it depends on the costing mechanism as well, commercial model. But yeah, it's, it's there isn't really an answer to it. 
um, when it comes to how much does this cost uh, if you want a VR model. It's um, it's really about you know the data that's available. Um, you know, working with you know uh, with yourselves, clients, projects, design teams, and then being able to actually then come up with a bespoke solution. Um, and you know that can be then upscaled or downscaled depending on available budget as well. And then I'm just going to touch briefly on virtual reality for safety and a little bit on augmented reality. Um, <clears throat> so um, we do and develop um, VR training modules as well. So not only are we just using it for design or for public consultations, um, <clears throat> you know, it's really about, you know, how can we use this to complement additional training aids as well. So it's not about going into a training environment, taking all the training modules that are there. It's how can we further complement that? Um, as I said earlier on, we take more in within an isolated experience because we're not distracted by mobile phones. We're not distracted by colleagues um, <clears throat> or anything similar to that. And about putting a headset on and you're taking more information in. So with this example here is that we are commissioned by Bear Scotland and we did a, an onboarding for uh, people before they go on site uh, onto high speed roads. So, for example, like a lane closure. So it was a, a 70 mile an hour going down to 60 mile an hour and um, a film crew went out and we then tagged on a risk assessment on top of that as well, uh, part of that uh, VR module. And as you can see here, just from some of the stats, you know, the fatalities that are on a lot of the Scottish roads, um, and again, you know, that kind of messaging can be applicable to you know any sector, any discipline. Um, you know, especially when you know <clears throat> our our uh, culture, um, you know, throughout the world, you know, on on health and safety and keeping not only ourselves safe but our colleagues safe as well. So it's you know we should, we're, we're doing more with technology as well to actually embrace that. And then just a little bit on augmented reality as well. So it's been able to even go out, you know, on site using devices, uh, you know, being able to see your know, utilities that are buried under the ground, um, you know, being able to see that as well. Um, it's, you know, augmented reality. It depends on the awareness and how it could be used. You know, by some it could be seen as a gimmick, um, but from our point of view, is that we are actually, you know, using that, um, you know, for part of design. Um, as much as it is for like contractors um, and colleagues out on site as well. Um, so yeah, it's really kind of aspiring to, you know, what do you want to use it for and what do you envisage the end user engaging with it as well. And that concludes the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Chris. Um, very uh, comprehensive. Um, anybody got any questions for Chris? I mean, I've got a couple. Um, at the start, you mentioned um, about your team effectively being able to come in at the start of a project. What, what would you deem as the start of the project? Because obviously, somebody that works in engineering, I would probably want to have a lot of detail before I invited you guys in. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really good point as well because it really kind of depends because you know we do get involved with a lot of sales, a lot of bids and tenders now. Um, you know, being able to kind of demonstrate what the differentiator is. You know, at the start of the project, you know, it might not be in direct involvement, but it's actually then kind of mapping out that kind of playbook as into you know where we could be integrated into the project. So it might not be immediate. But it's then kind of setting those milestones throughout the project life cycles to say, right, we can get, you know, visualization in. That would be quite conceptual. You know, it doesn't need to be high end, just showing some machinery or apparatus or, or anything like that kind of fairly early, um, you know, for spatial awareness. And then all the way through to the detailed design as well, where we then can start to have a look at asset management. Um, that's something I, I didn't really cover much of and you know, how we can then, you know, from the BIM data, you know, keep that, that asset management as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then you showed you showed another slide as well with the or another aspect where um, the the visuals were sort of there with the program, and 
I think you're in the uh, phasing. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Who are you on that? Is it the planners? Is it your team? Is it or is it? Uh, it was. It was. Uh, it was us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've actually, I've actually just about to kind of show you that one. Um, I'm just going to come out of PowerPoint if it lets me. I mean, I've, I've, I must admit, I've been on some projects before where you'd have to factor in costly erosion by the time we got a building. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the one that you saw in the in the demo yep. reel um, as well, and this is a a little bit of a background on this. It was a medical district in the US, and basically the client couldn't understand how they could shut the whole facility and the whole campus down to, to do the kind of the regeneration and build with new buildings you know, and, and everything like that. So it was re they really then came to us to then say, right, we have a program. It could be in Primavera, it could be from Navis, it could be, you know, Synchro from Bentley. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So basically, they came to us and go, you know, how can we convey that? I can't understand. So what we did is that, you know, you know, we haven't got any kind of like highly rendered images here. It's just using kind of Revit models. Um, but what we then did was that we created an interactive application where you could use this slider, and then as you can see, by sliding it, you can then see how the actual site built up over a period of time. And then all we're doing is taking those Revit models or or similar, um, you know, program, and then you know taking those layers and then being able to actually then keyframe it from our point of view as to what that construction se sequence would look like, and then cross referencing that back to the actual schedule that could come from, as I said, like Primavera or something like that. So it was really kind of being able to to demonstrate that over the period of time. And then it becomes a very kind of collaborative tool as well, because then the clients then starts to understand how this is possible. <laughs> you've got the planning or the master planners, you've got the architects all in the one room. And then with one really powerful communication tool like this, it just provides a better understanding. And that's a, a render image of what it would be like. At completion. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> for example, you know, uh, with very, very tight, confined spaces, you know, looking at either decommissioning buildings or building your know, brand new, uh, you know, like uh, towers or something like that or anything like that, then you know, this becomes a very, very powerful tool. Even with the 5D, we've got the most as well. So, actually then built in the 5D element that as well. So again, it provides all parties involved with the project a better understanding on you know, the actual uh, outlay at that particular stage of the project and the resource power as well on site at that particular time of the project. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of a lot in the 4D, 5D. We then kind of went into the visualization side of things where <clears throat> what we've got here is just a, a photograph taken from site. And then what we've done with our Revit model, again, with this concept of the slider, is then you're able to see basically you know, what it's going to be like during construction. And this is just a Revit model that we were working with. And the, you know, the client really wanted to gain an understanding of what the actual like building um, site and construction compounds would look like as well. And then just some galleries of quick, quick stills taken from the overall site as well. These are a little bit, these are a few years old now, mind you. <laughs> but yeah, but I think, you know, this is a, this is all in one application. So we don't need to come out, go into different programs, um, you know, or anything like that. Everything's in the one application. You've got 4D, you've got 5D, you've got, you know, the, the, the actual, the gallery of the, the stills, <clears throat> and even looking from a logistics plan as well. Everything's in one as well. So 
um, yeah, it's just a very, very effective communication tool. So is this the one, Tom, that you were <laughs> you were thinking of? And everything comes off it, whether it's stills, animations, uh... and then can I can't even carry on on that theme you know, of the kind of the four D, you know, even having a look at. Um, uh, like kind of water uh, reclamation facilities as well. Again, you know, we've got this. Um, it was actually taken from a drone, and then, as you can see, just by moving the slider from left to right, as then you can see the actual build up of the site for a period of time. So we've even got the landscaping and we've got the revit models. We've got the actual overall site plan, uh, the site plan. But where it becomes really, really powerful is the fact is that it's used as an optioneering tool as well. So then you can start to switch between different options. And this is just where it becomes a lot more engaging as well. So carrying on with some of those themes throughout the PowerPoint presentation, increasing that collaboration um, and engagement as well. And this is all developed you know, by my team. And kind of one of the last interactive applications is um, a project that we did out in the Middle East. <clears throat> so what we've done, another standalone application, don't need any software to run it or anything like that. Um, it could be used on tablets, smartphones, um, it could even be hosted online as well for you know making it accessible you know to others. Um, but what we've got here is that again, you know, using our developing uh, backgrounds as well within the team, giving a little bit about the project, the background on the project, the location, and then the kind of the actual master plan you know of the area as well. So this is kind of that intro into telling that story. Then when we're actually going into the construction scheduling, is then this is where that kind of that powerful communication comes in as well. So as you can see here, I've got seven different schedules. So instead of the other one that you saw for Oshner, we only had one schedule. We've actually got seven in here. Um, you know, and that's for different parts of the site as well, like utilities and the sports centres and things. But what we've got in this one, just by using that same functionality of the slider, is then you can actually then get to see the build up of the overall site and the different main aspects of the site as well. And again, this is just using different uh, data types. Um, Civil 3D and um, Revit was used uh, for this example. And sometimes we don't even have, you know, the actual like uh, plan or anything like that, uh, maybe in 2D. So yeah, I think it's whatever information's available, you know, we're able to, to, to work with that and come up with, you know, uh, various solutions. Again, just have a look at the site preparation. A bit closer up of the actual lab facility as well, which is the Revit model. So you can see all the different layers and the floors coming in. Uh, we actually did a, a VR walkthrough of this facility as well as a, <coughs> a walkthrough animation as well. So yeah, there's a, a fairly large budget on this project to come up with uh, quite a lot of our uh, outputs on it. And then just kind of similar to even having a look at you know, even the utilities as well. You know, we're using the kind of motion graphics as well, as you can see throughout. So you can use the slider or you can even use the play pause and then 3D visualization. So you can see those kind of high end kind of photorealistic still images as well. So similar with Oshner, you have one application with you know everything that's in that as well. And it can be hosted across uh, multiple platforms to make it as accessible to to you know to the end user as possible. Okay. Thanks for that Chris. Uh, there's somebody who 
I spent most of his life producing 2D drawings. I feel quite happy now. <laughs> we can turn them into 3D for you. <laughs> That's all right, yeah. Has anybody got any question? Tom, it's David. Hi, David. Uh, just a quick, this is obviously a fantastic application for civil design, civil construction. Is there much of a, a, a use for, for like process design, mechanical design, where you maybe want to look at uh, building a process plant or something like that? Yeah, a hundred percent. So uh, <clears throat> obviously a lot of these examples can be like civil um, that I was showing there. Uh, I have literally hundreds, if not thousands of examples across multi-sectors. Um, yeah, and it, what, what we've even done in the past is that we've actually done mechanical and machinery and even operational. Um, so we've done, you know, animations of showing um, like machinery actually in, in actual operation. You know how mm -hmm. so would then so you're actually not just using it as an animation it's then used as an actual training tool as well um a, a prime example is a project that we did um i'm unfortunately I can't disclose that because of the security over it but um it was uh, where we actually then developed a vr application of our uh, inside of our, our control room and then the end user the, the end user who has been trained up in using the because the, the material wasn't able to be handled um, within the facility, and it was different kind of operational mechanical kind of uh, um, mechanisms to take material from one side of the plant to the other, uh, mm -hmm. and we were able to to replicate that in VR uh, as well as doing that as as animation. So I think it's using what these capabilities are, and it could be used across. Um, you know, so many sectors um, that can, and multidisciplinary as well, um, including mechanical. Um, so our, even uh, a recent client we've been speaking to was exactly on that topic. Um, you know, the actual operational side of a of a facility um, and how we conveyed that to the end user. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for that. No problem. And, and and even that information as well that could come from you know, from programs such as as Inventor, you know, where it's that really kind of detailed uh, model um, of the, you know the the you know mechanical um, you know, operational, um, and you know we can work with that. You know we can actually put in the accurate you know simulations um, as well. Um, that can be anything from like oil and gas. Um, you to even within a, a nuclear facility as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Any further questions? No. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, Chris for that. Uh, yeah, like excellent. I, I have one more. Uh, All right. Yeah. Which um, basically it got launched this afternoon. Um, as I mentioned just before this call. So as we are now obviously embracing a different way of working globally, uh, I mentioned that we do a lot of public consultations and how we support our clients for events. Um, obviously with the, the pandemic and um, you know that kind of close contact with the public, it was going to be uh, restricted for a long time. You know, we actually now come up with a brand new solution called the virtual event space. Um, and this is the brand new marketing video that went out this afternoon, and it's now um, all over LinkedIn. <laughs> um, so again, it just been able to use that technology that I was mentioning beforehand, um, and basically creating this environment where then you can actually freely navigate around. You can click on the boards to actually bring up the content. You know, so it could be <coughs> if you know when you're at an event, you have maybe desks or you know tables in the middle of the room. You know, with the general arrangement drawings. You know we can actually replicate that real life scenario but now within a virtual environment that's hosted online so it's now becoming more accessible um <laughs> you know to to all users um, you know if, if members of the public weren't able to go events because of you know you know maybe um you know um accessibility or home life or even work or something like that then you know we're now bringing it to them this is a, a brand new one that just got released this afternoon, which is very well timing for <laughs> so, you know, for this evening. So as you can see, we've got three different row. You've got three different modes. You can walk around like a game, or you can do like a guided tour. We've even got a chat chat option as well in functionality, where 
um, you could be talking to di someone directly from either the project, you know, or from the the stakeholder team as well. So this is our our virtual event space. Chris, it's interesting though, because obviously around here we do uh, certainly a lot of the guys that's on here. We do quite a lot of uh, things like careers events and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, that's that's a very good topic, especially from um, you know I know uh, you know so many companies embrace work experience and career events and career fairs, where yeah. you know we want to you know a lot of. You know the industry wants to keep going with that, um, and now we have actually taken this solution and been able to to carry on. You know that culture. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, just just sort of looking at it there, you could imagine if it was a careers event. You know, you they could almost walk through the door, turn left if you're interested in this, turn right. You know, and lo and behold, there's a there's a, a board there that tells them all about what an engineer does, or tells them all about what's you know. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Could be quite good for schools. Yeah, so we're having a look at this at doing even for STEM events, you know, career <laughs> fairs, uh, work experience, um, yeah. and as well as you know, um, you know, kind of public consultations and stakeholder events as well. So, um, and even using it, you know, for for actual like meetings as well. You, know, you can create mm. your own meeting room. Um, you know, as you can see, reducing carbon, carbon footprint, health and safety. You know, and what we're actually then is done that comparison to, you know, what, how much is it cost for a real event, and then offsetting that against you know how much it costs for this, um, and the virtual event is proven to be more cost effective to a live event. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, question. <laughs> Adrian, uh, what percentage of project? Does PR cost? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard question to, uh, to actually answer because it really depends on the data that's available and what you want to gain as a, a VR output. So there's so many kind of different levels of virtual reality where you could be using virtual reality headsets just for a static image that you could just you know, be in that one isolated spot and then just have a look in 360 um, you know, you'll turn your head in the 360 or up and down or if you're getting more into an interactive VR environment you know where you're actually walking around an environment you know uh, clicking on different assets and bringing that, that asset management that's linked to the actual file so it, it's really kind of dependent on what you know you want to gain you know, as the user um, and how you want to use it. Uh, but you know, we've done VR applications that could be you know potentially you know ten thousand uh, pounds all the way up to you know and again this is over three or four years, over four different uh, design iterations to half a million. So that just shows you the scale um, of it. Um, is that yeah you know, again it's really you know how how you want to embrace the technology. Further uh, questions uh, on the system? All right, well, uh, I'd like to thank you. It's been, I find it very informative. Uh, round about this time, normally we would be getting a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, I appreciate everyone's time as well. Um, you know, it's. I would have loved to have come down. Um, you know, that was the original plan. Um, but um, you know, here's hoping there might be an opportunity further down the line. You know, when things start to ease off, um, you know, even the, the kind of the, the pleasure of maybe meeting some of you in the near future, or any kind of events or uh, through our networks. But um, I would just like to you know to thank you, Tom, and um, for inviting me on and for for Natalie for coordinating. That's a pleasure. Uh, like like you said, that, that's a that's a good sort of thought to hold on to because obviously I had a. Uh, the pleasure of being in our large conference room when you were there where you actually brought all your toys uh, <laughs> all the headsets you know so if and when uh Kobe clears up a bit we might look to set that up uh, yeah definitely yeah definitely um you know i'm always one for engaging uh you know on this sort of thing as well and uh, i'm just hoping that you know to, to everyone on the call you know it's provided an overview on you know not only just the traditional 3d visualization you know what we can really do um you know embracing the actual 
as things are starting to evolve with technology as well and how we're actually using, believe it or not, games engines to our advantage. Yeah. Uh, before before um, everybody joined, I think Natalie, you, we, were, we were talking about, is this going to be sort of video or not? is it a version of this going to be available? Um, yes, so this um, event w has been recorded um, and I will, um, I'll download it and then trim um, the event and send it around to all the registrants um, after in, in the next coming days. Mm -hmm. Is that okay, David, or would you rather just went on our website and encourage people to go on to our website? We can do both. Once we've got it, we can put yeah. it on the website as well. Yeah, we can do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great, I'll do that. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. This is this is the thing. This is a, a taste of what's to come. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, and thank you, everyone, for every time. Um, you know, it's been a, a pleasure, you know, presenting to you, and <clears throat> hopefully, you haven't got uh, a little bit bored of my my Scottish voice over the past hour and a bit. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.